Okay, today what I want to show you guys is that we get a lot of questions and um, a lot of people talking about how um, it's difficult making wax dirt during the winter months. It's December 9th right now and what I have here is five gallons of dirt and what I've done is I've used this standard sifter to already sift it. I really like this inexpensive sifter because it's really fine. So I've got the dirt sifted and what I'm using is this is five pounds of flake wax and I really like this fine stuff that F&T has. It works out real good. And what I've done is it's five pounds of wax to 10 gallons of dirt, sifted dirt or sand, one or the other. You can do the same. It's basically one wax to two dirt. So I pre-weighed out, I cut it in half. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take our wax and I'm just gonna dump it on the dirt. Bust up the clump parts. And we're just gonna take and work this in Mix it up. And this is a no freeze. There, there isn't anything really out there that works this good. A lot of guys talk about peat moss. I've used it for years. Um, you will have problems with peat moss if you're in the east and north. Um, the weather that we get, just because it varies so much. So you get this mixed up. And you can do this, basically today what I'm doing is I'm showing you how to do this over a stove. And you can do this outside. You could lay it out and let it melt in the sun. So you get that mixed up really good like that. And then go to the dollar store and pick up some of these 14 quart roaster pans. And what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to fill this about halfway up with the wax dirt. And that's, you can get probably close to, I would say about a gallon and a half. We're going to set our lid on there. We're going to come over to my wood stove. And we're just going to set it on the stove just like that. You know, them there at the dollar store are about 16 bucks. We're gonna grab another roaster pan. We're gonna fill it, you know, not fill it up, but come up about halfway. Because what you want to do is once this starts melting, is you're going to have a wooden stick, or what I like using is this metal octagon bar. And you're going to basically just stir this once you start seeing these edges get wet. And we're going to set this second pot on. And we're going to come back in a few minutes and check it. So as you can see, if we run, this is five gallons of dirt. If we run one more batch through here with just two of the roaster pans, We've got five gallons of wax dirt ready to go. We could take this tomorrow and go trap it. And um, what I wanna show you with this dirt is I've made some earlier, is if we take this dirt and pack a spot right here, envision that's a trap. And if I take my water, and this is how that wax will keep that water running off of it. It will not penetrate the dirt. And that's what you want. So if you're trapping when you got freezing conditions, there's no antifreeze or nothing that you need in a situation like this. So what happens, for example, is we've got probably about two to three inches of snow today, and it's a powder form. The only time you're going to come back to that set and really mess with it is if you get a crust of snow over top of it. Then what you, you can do is just come in and clean that crust off. So I just want to come over and take and all I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up one of these roaster pans and look at it and see if it's starting to melt. And you can see the dirt starting to turn a different color and it's not quite yet ready. 
So we'll take and we'll leave that a little bit longer. We'll check that one. And basically what you'll see is on the edges, it'll be, it'll start getting wet. So we're going to leave that for a few minutes. We'll come back and check it here in a little bit. Okay, so we're going to check our dirt now. It's been on there for, I would say, about under five minutes. You want to be real cautious when you're dealing with wax and you're doing this. You don't want to be mixing that wax right here and dripping down on that because of how flammable it is. Always mix your wax over there and your dirt over there. So what I got here is a welding glove. And um, I'm basically just going to take, you can use a piece of wood, my stir stick, and I'm going to just take and set this down. And what I want to show you here is that you can see the edges getting wet in that. So at that point there, all we're going to do is we're going to start just stirring this up. And as you can see, as we stir it, it's mixing. And it's melting the rest of that wax. Put this back on. So all you want to do is stir that up like that. You can take, be careful if you, I've done so much of it, you can mix it a little bit with your hand. Don't get your hand way down in there though. It's, it's best to use something to stir. As you can see that dirt is taking a different color because that wax is melting in there. So once all of it, as you can see, the color of it is melted down in, that one is ready to come off. We're going to come over to this one. We're going to set our lid down, and again, you can just see the edges melting, so we're going to stir this one. And on this stove here, basically, I can put three of these across, and I can go do something else. And um, have almost five, well, five gallons of wax dirt done in no time. <clears throat> And if somebody didn't have a wood stove like down south or something, you can use like a Coleman stove or something like that, right? Yeah, you can put these pots on a Coleman stove, control the heat, and uh, you don't want it blasting. And just put the lid on it and, and stir it. That's the key thing. Um, so we got this all mixed up now. And the next step that I want to show you is is a very critical step because this is where... A lot of times when it's getting done, we'll have people that call up and say that they ended up with a big clump of something. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm putting on my welding gloves or leather gloves or whatever. You don't need to let... I'm going to grab this and I'm just coming over here and all I'm going to do is I'm going to get this out on there like that. And you can see that heat come right off of it. I'm going to set the roaster pan down here. I'm going to grab this roaster pan. And we're going to lay that up like that. Set that roaster pan down there. Grab that lid. Put that lid on there. We're going to take our gloves off. We're going to move our sifter. Now if you left this dirt just like this, this is the most critical. I have a lot of calls to where people's like, this hardened up on me, Harry. Well, it's going to harden up on you. It's got wax in it. Look at all that heat coming from it. A lot of times when people's at this point here, what they're doing is they're putting it in a plastic barrel or a five gallon barrel. What you want to do is you want to get this heat out of this dirt and you want to get it pretty close to room temperature. So all I'm doing is I'm leveling this dirt up. There's a lot of heat in there. And let that heat come out. And you can see, it just takes takes a little bit here. Be patient. You've come this far. Use something like this so that it's not melting to your glove. And I like to get it depth-wise, I mean roughly about an inch. And just let that heat come off of it.
So it'll just keep, the heat will come out of it, and then we're just going to keep working it until all the heat's out of it. Once the heat is out of it, what we're going to do at that point is we're going to put it into one of our five-gallon pails. We're going trapping tomorrow, so what we're doing is we're putting it in five-gallon pails. Storage, very important. I have a 50-gallon drum here. And basically what we have is I just took and cut the lid. We put our wax dirt in there, and I put the lid on there. I don't want mice and stuff getting on this dirt. I want everything to be natural. So you can get yourself, go to a hardware store and pick up like a trash can with a snap lid on it and put it in a trash can. So this is just a method that can be used and it can be used, like I said, today is December 9th, tomorrow is our bobcat season and we're making wax dirt. I've waited for this opportunity Normally I have that barrel pretty close to three quarters to, you know, sometimes all the way up full. I can make this all winter. I don't care what the temperature is. We're in the 20s right now. So this is just another method instead of using the sunlight and waiting all day for it to melt. But the same thing, if you're doing this outside and you've had this on a four by eight sheet or a piece of plastic, it, it needs to cool. Because see, it's going to start to want to harden up. It'll start to get pieces. So what I do is I come back and I get that heat out of it. See how it's trying to make a pie? So you take your hand like that and you get that heat right out of it. Once all of the heat's out of it, then you can put, you know, like if it's going in a barrel and you snap the lid down, because here's what happens when you snap a lid down to a barrel and you got heat in something is that it's forming condensation. And once you form that condensation, you may come back and um, basically what you're gonna have is your top layer, you may have a brick that you can't use. Now, if you run into a situation where like, you get these little pieces where it's kind of balled up, not really a big deal. You can just come along with the sifter Put it back in the sifter and sift it and take and push it. See how I'm pushing it through? Or you can just take and pitch them. Um, this is really inexpensive to do. For $14.95 you can end up with 10 gallons of dirt. And um, this mixture varies for what some people do. Um, this is the mixture that I do up here which is five pounds of wax to 10 gallons of dirt, dry dirt. If your dirt is not dry, say I went out and I chopped a, uh, cut the frost and got some dirt that was frozen. All we would do is bring it in here, get it unthawed the best we could, get it um, sifted, put it in the roaster pans, set it up here and dry it first and then bring it back and mix our wax in it. So as you can see, it's been just a few minutes. This dirt has come a long ways. And it's pretty close to going into the drum. Now at that point there, you can, um, in, instead of using a wood stick, you can use and make sure you got gloves on. The reason I do that is the biggest thing is, is we don't want that scent in the dirt. And plus we don't want that wax getting somebody's hand burned or something like that. So this is the most effective way to trap. And when I say that and keep your traps working, um, give it a try. If you have any questions, shoot us a link and we'll answer them questions for you. Thanks, everybody. Grew up south of the Mason-Dixon Working, spitting, hunting, and fishing Stone-cold country by the grace of God